Hello, yes, first of all, I did put on makeup solely to record this video. It was fun and made me feel more like a person, so I regret nothing. We are all locked up in our homes right now, so I suspect that a lot of people like me, who very rarely show up in your subscriptions, are gonna start popping up again. Um, Vita this year is gonna be fucking wild. Uh, that will not be me, to clarify. I am not doing Vita. <laughs> it was probably my most active ever with like Snark Squad and blogging and vlogging and all of these kinds of things when I was freelancing full time. And I used to think that this was simply a question of time, that I simply had more of it because I was working a little bit less. But near the end of that period, I was pretty close to consistently working 40 hours a week. So I know that this question of time was always a little bit more complicated than that. I was living with my parents at that time and they live in a town that I have a complicated relationship with. Uh, I have a great relationship with my parents, but uh, truly fuck that town. So during this period, I was one, working from home 80% of the time. Um, I also had sort of some IRL jobs with middle school kids, uh, but uh, two, had no external social life whatsoever. And in this particular moment where I am working from home 100% of the time and have lost all access to my IRL social life and also don't even have the added comfort of being able Able to sometimes go talk to my mom in person, I am reminded of the very particular kind of energy that fueled my activities during that time. As an aside, prior to a week ago, I thought that I really loved living at home, but plot twist, it turns out I fucking hate it. These spaces, Snark Squad in particular, were never really about creation. They were always first and foremost about community. Like what changed was not my workload, as this question of time would suggest. It was the fact that I moved to Missoula and I made all these friends and suddenly had this IRL community and I found myself in far less need of this online community that I had so thoroughly needed in that earlier time in my life. And suddenly I was like just doing a lot less online. I was doing things that required a little bit less effort. And I don't think that it was my workload. I don't think that it was age. I think that it was this thing of community and it took being put back into that position, that position of being fully cut off from offline community, albeit in a much starker and scarier way, <laughs> uh, to really call that into focus. I am really grateful to one, have a job that can be performed with relative ease from home, um, to where we went to working from home basically as soon as we had cases in Missoula, uh, but also to have access to all of my coworkers on Slack. I used to have all of the like random channels where people post you know memes and shit muted because I found the notifications incredibly distracting and just like could not deal with it but now I'm like wow guys show me all of your memes I miss you so much uh, I'm so lonely I am also super grateful for the snark squad discord which I will put a link to in the description if you want to come hang out with us uh, and just all of the ways in which I still do have friends and spaces of community online uh, I feel like I had gotten gotten incredibly lazy about nurturing that and I just feel really lucky to know that I still have it in in spite of that. I realize of course that in the middle of a fucking pandemic people's health and livelihoods are much bigger concerns and I am also grateful for the fact that this question of loneliness is actually my like biggest concern at this moment. But anyway, in addition to Discord and Slack and making podcasts with my friends, my friend Deboki and I are finally deciding to forge ahead with an idea that we actually had a while ago, um, but then kind of life happened and then like uh, <laughs> everything around happened. Um, but now we're doing it. We are starting a nonfiction book club. Basically, she is going to pick hard science books and I'm gonna pick social science books. And every other month we're gonna do sort of a live stream social science stuff on my channel and the hard science stuff on her channel and just talk about the books that we're picking. It is entirely possible that nobody wants this, but we do. So if it's just me talking to my friend, I will be perfectly satisfied. But if you want to join us, we are doing our first one on uh, The Personality Brokers by Merve Emra. Uh, um, here on April 11th at 5 p.m. Eastern time. I've actually already read this book, so this will be a reread for me, but it is about the history of the Myers-Briggs type indicator with a lot of sociology of personality testing kind of woven throughout. Um, it, it is a like genuinely good book that I actually highly recommend. It's independent of all of this, but if you want to read it and come hang out with us or not read it and come hang out with us, uh, that would be great. So again, The Personality Brokers, April 11th, 5 p.m. Eastern time. 3 p.m. Mountain Time. That's where I am. But this thing that I'm doing right here is also me checking in with one of my 
many spaces for online community that I am fortunate to have to say hello. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> How are you passing your days? Uh, and I, I don't know, let's keep talking because I know that I need this right now and I suspect that that is true for some of you as well. I hope that you are all taking care of yourselves and those that you care about as best as you possibly can in this particular moment and I will be back here again as uh, whenever I am, uh, but definitely April 11th. <laughs> um, okay, bye.